Call him from a 308 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, Sam. It's Kowalski. Kowalski in Nebraska. Nebraska. How are you, Kowalski? Oh, not too bad. Hey, I was calling in because I wanted to know, how do you think this impeachment is going to affect the formation of the Space Force? Uh... <laughs> that was a conversation that came up during Thanksgiving, and I, I didn't know how to answer well, I think uh, as far as I can tell, I don't think it's going to impact it at all. And oh I would God. challenge someone to prove me wrong on that. And now they're threatening the Space Force. <laughs> we had the Space Force, but with the impeachment, what did you, the I Democrats you on the movie. are hurting. He's going to look when he's really panning. That's my new angle on it now. So she's like... <sighs> They're impeaching the Space Force. Wait, Kowalski, how it did you respond disgrace. to that? That's what I want to know. What? How did you respond to it? <laughs> how, did, sorry. how did you respond to it? I think they were mostly joking about it, but it was something that was actually discussed, and it, it was pretty much a pointless conversation. Well, I mean, no, I, he, I understand, but I mean, well, is we, your family, was your family, Force. did you have family members who were heavily invested in the Space Force? No, I just think some of them must have seen like a Neil deGrasse Tyson video once about why the Space Force would be necessary and whatnot. It, it was dumb, but nerd. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. The real wow. reason I called suck. was because I wanted to know if you guys actually like had ever seen what the importance to Ukraine is on like U.S. foreign policy in general, like. Yeah, have you guys like ever looked into seeing why the Ukraine is like such a focal point in our foreign policy? Like, are you guys aware of why? My guess would be some form of natural resource pipeline to Europe and the broader kind of strategic question about you know NATO and the European Union. But well, go ahead. For Klaus. the most part, from what I've been able to gather by it, it's that. Losing the Ukraine for the Russians would be equivalent to, like, the Deep South breaking away and becoming an independent country. Like, if Russia has the Ukraine, they can be a superpower again. Because much like the United States, most of their power originates from, like, their geographical position. They have no threats to their east, no threats to their north. The only threats they have are to the south, which they have bottlenecks through mountains you can't send armies through mountains it's never been done in a modern context but they are vulnerable to their west which opens into you know europe but if they have the ukraine they can bottleneck the europeans into basically the passes between the carpathian mountains and the black sea and the baltic sea so like as far as u.s foreign policy is concerned Russia still stands to be like the only legitimate threat to the United States. So in the context of the game that we actually created ourselves, this is like the most important thing for us to do to prevent there from ever being like a challenger to the United States. And it is quite telling that Pompeo, a guy who was in the CIA, who actually has like a vested interest in the current system that this, you know, is like essential to, while in control of the State Department, is willing to undermine U.S. foreign policy interests to protect one guy. I, my my understanding is this: is that like the the that that Russia might be, and, and and we shouldn't say the Ukraine because it's now it's not the Ukraine was the way that it was referred to when it was a part of the Soviet Union, as opposed to its own uh, country. Now, um, is my understanding. Yeah. That um, that Correct. if there was some assurance by, uh, you know, that that Russia had that Ukraine would not be part of NATO, uh, that that might be enough to assuage their concerns because, it you know, cuts both ways. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's like um, it is it is a. It is a defense for Moscow, and it's also a road for the West, I guess. Yeah. Um, and and so, uh, I, I mean, I think um, it is, I, I would imagine from the perspective of the United States, it is a way to contain uh, Russian ambitions, um, you know, 
as opposed to our own ambitions. Can I, I agree. And I, I just think it's like going back to the last couple of, of decades where there was especially, I mean, the 1990s and the aughts are our fault. Like the West lied about NATO expansion. They did shock therapy. They helped generate this oligarch system. Even the PR and disinformation techniques that people are obsessed with, which are real, go back to literally like U.S. Dick Morris helped run Boris Yeltsin's reelection campaign in 96. So again, it's always better to think in terms of global oligarchy and global problems. But just with, with Ukraine, because it, 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 there was so much that got confused and it was like there was obviously legitimate protests in Maidan and obviously a lot of people protesting why they protest everywhere else because things suck and they're corrupt. Then there was an extreme right wing faction in Ukraine, which the U.S. backed. And there also was just the basic distinction that, yes, Russia had legitimate concerns going back to NATO expansion. But we don't want to live in a world, and this applies to everybody, uh, where a country just says, we're taking Crimea, <laughs> which is what they did, even if they were right about it. And that, you know, on some theoretical level, right? Like, that's the fundamental problem. And that, again, is what Trump is actually empowering across the board, first and foremost, for the United States. And that's why it's not a anti-empire it's it's an acceleration of empire hope that makes sense uh kowalski thanks for the call have a good one boy you too all right and gals we got time well, for you. i so think gentlemen